generated because instrumentation amplifier essentially has at least so noise in instrumentation amplifiers so instrumentation amplifiers essentially have op amps either two op amps or in most of the cases three op amps out of them one becomes the main amplifier which is the difference amplifier which is amplifying another one is for adjustment of the offsets if three are there two difference amplifier stages will be there like this they improve the common mode rejection ratio and also improve the difference gain of the amplifier while reducing the offset voltage and offset current here also the input impedance is very very high and output impedance is low now the transfer function of instrumentation amplifiers does not depend on external feedback networks so whatever feedback resistors we are connecting if you all remember in the uh, earlier classes we have studied it is independent of the resistor and capacitor or the feedback resistor values and also not on the complete input impedance input resistance values if the gain of the overall gain of the instrumentation amplifier is g then the power spectral density of the output noise now what exactly is the power spectral density of the noise at the output terminal how the power level in the noise is vary what is the density where the higher concentration of the noise is present so the graph giving idea about this power variation at the output side with respect to frequency with frequency how the power is varying that is known as power spectral density here eta and etb essentially when it is a difference amplifier at the two terminals inverting and non inverting terminal we have eta and etb as the thermal noise voltage sources so here you have the resistance here also you have the resistance or if you consider it to be impedance then zoa is the impedance at the inverting terminal and zob is the impedance at the non inverting terminal when these two impedances are there and also the voltage sources are eta and etb thermal noise generators and en is as usual en and in are the noise voltage and noise currents at the input terminal due to offsets when you have this kind of a configuration so how many noise sources are there 1 2 3 4 plus this is the noise current at the non inverting terminal as well because in the earlier case we had grounded it so the noise current was flowing to ground but here there is an impedance which is connected here zob at the non inverting terminal so another current through this non inverting terminal in the earlier case we have considered it to be ip in at the inverting and ip at the non inverting so assuming that these two are equal here in this case we have considered in equal to in at both the inverting and non inverting terminals now what is going to be the total voltage noise voltage produced these due to these sources so what are the sources en is the source plus in into z not z not is the total impedance at the input terminals and in is the common current so in square into z not square is the total voltage square rms value squared values and z dash o is the parallel impedance of these two plus eta and etb are the noise voltage sources at the inverting and non inverting terminals square into the gain so gain is the op amp open loop gain 
So if that is the gain, then total voltage is available at the open loop instrumentation amplifier output end are given by this. Where En square, that is the noise voltage source here is En1 square plus En2 square. En1 and En2 are the voltages here divided by G. That is referred to input, referred to output, what we have studied. If you want at the input terminal, divide by G. If you want at the output terminal, into G. So that gives me the noise voltage or any voltage values when they are referred to either input terminal or output terminal. If you are referring to the output side, you are multiplying the input by gain. If you are referring to the input side, then output voltage is divided by the gain. That is what is done here. So, like this in the instrumentation amplifier, this is the noise level. So, easy to calculate when you know these different noise sources. So, common noise sources EN, IN. If the terminals are not grounded, then you have. ET, A, ETB. If it is connected to source, then you have RS and ETS. So if you remember these noise sources, you will be able to write the equation of the noise voltage at the output terminal. The next aspect is drifts in resistors. Now drift we have studied in op-amp, which happens due to temperature variations. Now here in op amps for conditioning we might have used good number of resistors. They may be either fixed or variable. If they are fixed, how the drift calculations have to be made? If they are variable, how the drift calculations are to be made? We will see. So usually in all the resistors we make use of standard values but our designs whenever we calculate they give a non-standard value so first thing what we do we round them off to a nearest standard value when you round them off to a nearest standard value we have already either increased or decreased the actual design value so we select the closest standard value with the appropriate tolerance and a material suitable for the application in hand now what type of resistor we choose that depends upon the cost involved or the pricing of our product and who is going to be the user of our product on the basis of that, we decide the resistor value. Once you know, I'm sorry, the type of the resistor, not the value, type of the resistor. Again, once you choose the type of the resistor, what are the standard values available there? So depending upon the standard values and the tolerance limit that can be considered or how much we can go ahead with the variations that depends upon the application so the tolerance and the material suitable for the application in hand play a major role in deciding the value of the resistor and usually the metal film carbon film chip wire bound or the potentiometer type they are the ones which are used here so metal film carbon film chip wire wound or sometimes you know the ones which are wound on the ceramic those resistors also are used so once you decide upon the resistor type and the tolerance now how exactly the resistance values change with time so actual resistance value changes with time depending upon the material and the power dissipated so the value change in the resistor value is dependent on the material we use or the amount of power it dissipates we have the resistors with one quarter power dissipation or half power dissipation so depending upon how much power they dissipate that depends again on the application 
the ones which are used in heater elements require higher power dissipation ones the ones which are used for our regular lab purposes they require lower value again if the power involved in the circuit is high then you have to go ahead with higher power dissipation capacity so if theta is the thermal resistance which depends upon the dimension of the resistor the heat conductivity of the materials used and to a lesser degree the way it is mounted then if the ambient temperature is ta then theta into p gives me the total heat dissipated or variation in the heat dissipation so the total power dissipated p is given by t is the absolute temperature minus ta is the ambient temperature so the difference in the absolute temperature and the ambient temperature gives me the total delta t so this delta t divided by theta theta is the thermal resistance gives me the power dissipated so your power dissipated can be given as delta t divided by theta where delta t is the variation in the temperature which is the difference between the ambient temperature and the actual temperature so if you know the difference in the ambient temperature and the actual temperature and the thermal resistance of the resistor you will be able to calculate the power dissipated any one if you know you will be able to calculate the power dissipated so this power dissipated is going to be dependent on the variation of the temperature so in the case of fixed resistors the drift happens due to the variation in the temperature happening in the ambience as well as the operating temperature of the circuit now in case of adjustable resistors where the drift is happening so drift again in potentiometers or variable resistors happens due to variation in the ambience and the actual working temperatures so electronic circuits use two main types of potentiometers one is a trimming or the preset type small ones second one is potential uh, potentiometers of wire wound type so potentiometers for wiper movements to eliminate circuit tolerances or for circuit readjustment and control potentiometers these are the variety of potentiometers possible the trimming or the preset type we have used in the lab or sometimes the variable ones what we call pots 10k 20k pots they are the control potentiometers or the adjustment potentiometers so they are usually used in programmable gain amplifiers or volume control gain control controlling the gain or the feedback in case of op amps we use the variable type potentiometers which are most commonly used in wherever the controlling is used volume control gain control the applications there they are used so the preset type where the variation is of few ohms whereas these control potentiometers the variation is of the order of few kilo ohms or even higher now here stability of these potentiometers is very very important so setting stability is the ability of a potentiometer to maintain its initial setting during the mechanical and environmental stresses so basically these stresses are nothing but the shocks which are given they may be due to the temperature variations or they may be due to circuit conditions whatever are happening or may be due to mechanical vibrations also that are happening in the application so because of them there may be instability caused because of this unstable condition noise signals may be generated so these noise signals which are generated may hamper the readings what we take so because of these we have to see what are the drifts which are possible with these potentiometers so in resistant metals or carbon film resistors larger than the thermal noise for a conductor with resistance r so what is the amount of noise in metals it is more than the thermal noise 
because a relatively large portion of electrons in film resistors flow along the surface rather than inside why the noise is more because they the charge carriers flow along the surface not inside the conductor there is an excess noise whose voltage spectral density is given by here this is the formula for voltage spectral density which is dependent on the voltage because the charge carriers of the current flow along the surface and not inside the conductor it is dependent on the voltage or resistance of the conductor and also on the frequency so this equation we are not deriving we are directly taking this so the noise generated or the excess noise whose voltage spectral density is given by this so excess noise is not white and same as 1 by f noise that means it is dependent on the low frequencies it is not white noise so there is same noise power in each decade that means it is for every decade the same noise power is generated decade wise the power is not changing so the noise is 20 log e ex divided by voltage so this is dependent on the dc voltage what is applied the noise is dependent on the frequency here you can see it is dependent on the frequency on the resistor and the dc current which is flowing <coughs> so this is given by 20 log eex by vdc so the total noise power which is generated is excess noise plus the thermal noise so thermal noise whenever you have a conductor associated thermal noise will be there and this we have seen even in the op amps also how the thermal noise or the johnson's noise or nyquist noise all three are one and the same so it is proportional to or is equal to thermal noise square plus the excess noise which is produced due to the drift in the resistor value so this is regarding your noise in fixed and variable resistors